All right, so so I'm I'm excited because we're going to be talking about a we're going to be talking about a very simple and replicatable gospel presenta- presentation that we call the three circles, and um, it's just it's fantastic. Now there's there's other gospel presentations out there that work good as well, but we know um, it's just a fact that all around the world this gospel presentation called the three circles is working and bearing fruit, all, literally all around the world, and many many people are coming to Christ through it. So again. The presentation is called the three circles, and actually, if I could have Becca come up with me, this is my daughter Becca. Becca. She's super cool. All right, come on up, and um, we're just gonna—I'm just gonna—we're just gonna model it together so you guys can see what it might look like. Sorry, we'll just—we'll just pretend we're out in the neighborhood, okay? So I walk up and I knock on Becca's door, and I'm like, "Hey, hey, how are you?" Good. I'm good. Good. Well, hey, my name's Caleb. These are some of my friends, and uh, we're, we're followers of Jesus, and we're just out in the community, just going around, getting to know some people, and seeing if there's any way that we can just pray for people and maybe, like, like bless the community a little bit. Is there, is there any way that we can be praying for you today? Oh, just praying that I can deal with my brothers. They're kind of annoying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bro- brothers can be that way. So you want, you want us to pray for your annoying brothers? <laughs> Okay. Well, would you, would you mind if we just do that real quick right now? Sure. Okay, awesome. Uh, uh, Father God, just um, thanks so much for how much you love us. And just thanks for Becca and, and how cool she is and how um, you just uniquely created her, Lord. And we just pray specifically as she deals with her brothers that you would just give her patience and understanding. And um, just help her to love her brothers like, like you love her. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks so much for letting me uh, let, us, let us pray for you. You know, do you mind if I ask you another question? Um, do you feel do you feel like you're close to God, or do you feel like you're far from God? Like in your life, do you feel like you have a relationship when you're close with God, or do you feel like you're kind of like far from Him? I guess I'm kind of like far from Him. Okay, you're kind of you feel like you're kind of far from God. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Um, do you mind if I if I show you a picture that um, that really changed my life, and it it kind of helps us understand what it means to be close to God? Sure, that'd be great. Okay, awesome. Thank you. All right, so it goes like this. So as you know, we all live in a broken and cracked world. Like we just, we just look around, right? You look around like the world, we turn on the news, anything like that, right, Becca? And we, and we see like brokenness. We see, we see war on TV. Like right now, we're literally dealing with this giant global pandemic called COVID-19, right? Whatever that, whatever's going on with that. And we see that there's brokenness and there's sin and there's sickness, and then I know, for, I know for like me, even in my own family, I see that. I see brokenness, I see divorce, I see pain, I see death and all those things. So we just, we just see brokenness everywhere, right? But that's, that's not the way that God originally designed the world. When God originally designed the world, he designed the world to be a perfect place where people love each other and it's not full of sin and it's not broken, but what happened is the first human beings, and then, and then we do the same thing, the first human beings decided to leave God's perfect design. And the way they did that is they sinned. So they sinned, and, and, and sin just basically means that people um, did things that were outside of God's plan, and instead of listening to God, they, they did their own thing. They sinned and they entered this broken world. And then a lot of times when we're, we're in a broken world, we do all kinds of things to try and get out of brokenness. So one of those might be, you know, a lot of people like turn to drugs or alcohol to like, to like get rid of their pain for a short time, right? And we, and we lean into those things hoping that we'll be able to get out of brokenness. But it doesn't work. It usually snaps us back in like a bungee cord into brokenness. Another, another thing that might happen is we might pursue like all kinds of success in a career, or we might try and be the super mom, any of those things, and we work really, really, really hard to have this good image that everybody thinks we're perfect, we're really successful, we have a nice shiny car, a beautiful house. But again, that, that leads us back into brokenness. And then for a lot of us too, I know I, I've struggled with this, we just try and be like the perfect religious person. So we go to church every week, we give and we do all of these good works, but maybe we don't really have a relationship with Jesus. And again, that just keeps pulling us back into brokenness. And it can be hard to, hard to get out of that. But thankfully, God had a plan to get us out of brokenness. And that plan was this. He sent Jesus, 
his son, who, who was also God, down from heaven. And he came down and he lived a perfect life on earth. And then what he did is he died on the cross for us. And when Jesus died on the cross, he took all of our sin and all of our guilt and all of our shame upon himself. And it was nailed to the cross with him. And he paid the price that our sin, that our sin, the, the price of our sin, which is death. He paid that for us. And then he was, he was buried. And three days later, Jesus rose from the grave. And when he did that, he defeated sin and he defeated death. And because of that, Jesus made a way for us to come to him. And the way we do that, the Bible says, is this. Number one, the first thing we need to do is we need to turn. So we turn away from our sin. If we're walking in sin, walking towards sin, we turn, or the Bible would say repent, and then we walk towards Jesus. So number one, we turn from our sin. And then number two, we believe. So we turn, and then we believe in everything the Bible says about Jesus. We believe in the story of Jesus we talked about right here. We turn and believe. And then when that happens, when we do that and we turn and believe, the Bible says that we become a new creation, just like we talked about. We become a new creature. And instead of living in brokenness, we're now living in God's plan. We're literally like made new from the inside out. And then it doesn't stop there. We're not just made new. The Bible also says that we now have a new mission in life and a new goal in life. And one of those is to grow. So we're going to grow in our faith and we're going to keep becoming more like Jesus. And then also, we're going to go. So we're not just going to stay put and like be Christians who just go to church all the time, right? We're not just going to become attenders. We're going to go back out into the broken world and we're going to help other people turn from their sin and believe in Jesus so they can be made, to, made new as well. Does that, does that make sense what I said, Becca? Yeah, I think it does. Okay, can I, can I ask you another question? Okay, do you feel, when you look at this picture we showed, like do you feel like you're living in brokenness? Or do you feel like you're living more in like God's design? I think I'm living in brokenness. You're living in brokenness? Yeah. Okay. Do you, do you want to live in brokenness or do you want to live in God's design? No, I want to live in God's design. Okay, that's awesome. Well, all we got to do is we just need to have a conversation with Jesus, like from your heart to Jesus' heart, where we do those things, where you do those things, where you turn from your sin, and then you choose to believe in Jesus, and then make him the king of your life. Do you feel like that's something you want to do? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. All right, thank you. So that's, that's just an example of what the three circles looks like. And thank you, Becca, for helping me out and being nice to me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You can go sit down. All right, thank you so much. All right, so that's just a simple presentation of the three circles. Just wanted to kind of model it for you. Now, did, did anybody catch? I asked three questions at the beginning just to kind of get to know them and stuff. Anybody catch, like, maybe what's the first question we talked about? Can I pray for you? Very good. Yep. Can I pray for you? Sorry, I have terrible handwriting. Uh, so can I pray for you, number one? And we find that, that's not the only question you can ask, but that's one that a lot of times people will, it gives you a gauge whether they want to talk to you or not, whether, whether they have spiritual interests. Okay, can I pray for you? What else did we ask? I actually asked this before, can I pray for you? I'm going to make this number two. Oh, close for, oh yes, yeah, it's number one, sorry. Yep, so number two is... Are you close or far from God? Good. And does anybody remember the other one? Or show you picture. Yep. Good. So can I show you a picture? And of course, Becca was doing a good job playing along with me. But, th but those are the, those are, it's really that simple. Like, if you ask, if you start asking those questions of people, like, can I pray for you? It gives you a really good sense of whether they want to engage in a spiritual conversation or not. And then pray for them, ask if they're near or far from God, and then move right into the picture. And by the way, even if they say, oh yeah, I feel near to God, always move on to, can I show you a picture? You know, always move on and still share the gospel with them. So you, these three questions, 
and then over to the three circles, and then I asked a few questions at the end. Do you guys remember what those were? Anybody? Yeah, which circle, where do you feel? Yep, good. So at the end, we'll just say, where are you? Or which circle are you in? Good. And then she said, I feel like, I feel like I'm in brokenness. So where, would you like to be? where would you like to be? Yep, so where would... You like to be? And then the final question. So she said, I'd, I'd like to be in God's plan. Yeah, good. So can we pray right now? Good. And for me, what's crazy, it's not, like, it's not like I lead people to Jesus all the time or anything like that. But what's crazy is when I get down here and somebody says yes. I'm like, oh. But it, but it happens. If we, if we choose to like step out in faith and share the gospel with people, people will come to Christ. That's how it works. So, all right. Let's take a minute with your buddy. And I want you guys to practice this on each other. And then we'll grab everybody together after that. Awesome to see you guys having some good conversations. Hey, just wanted to put in one thing. Dave, Dave had a really good suggestion I thought was awesome. Um, and that third question, I, I said something like, um, would you like to pray to receive Jesus or something like that? He had a, he had a really good thought about a, a different question. And it's like, what's stopping you from taking the next step? So you're not always going to have somebody that says, you know, I, I live in brokenness. So it might not always be, do you want to pray and receive, right? It's just like, what, what's their next step? Because you might talk to, you might be out talking to people and you might run into somebody who's a strong Christian and their, their next step might be to connect with a community like this that's going out and actually like reaching their neighbors with the gospel or come to a training like this or get involved in a church that's doing something like this. So, yep. Did anyone get, did anyone get stuck? Have any questions that come up as you try to walk through this with your buddy? I had a question. Yes. So, like, how would you like, push back as far as, like, whenever you start sharing, like, basically the gospel here, people are like, oh, no, 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 like, like. We will get into that tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, it's a good question. Very good question. And that's, it's such a good question. We, we work through it. Yep. Can you repeat the question? All right. Oh, sorry, there, her question? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, what do you do when they're like, uh, I'm not so sure, or... I don't think so, or, yeah, what do you do with the different responses? We will deal with that in detail tomorrow. Good. Anyone get stuck? Let me ask a question. Did your buddy sound just like Caleb when they walked through the three circles? No. Did anyone sound just like Caleb when they walked through it? Because that person didn't do a good job. Because I will tell you, everyone who shares the three circle, it sounds different for everybody. You know why? This is not a script, right? This is a conversation guide, right? So can you talk about God's design? Can you talk about sin and brokenness? Can you talk about who Jesus is and what he did? Can you talk about the response of turning and believing in him, making him king of your life, your own personal boss? And growing and going in a relationship with God. Can you talk about that? Yeah. It's not going to sound the same with everybody. In fact, that's what we want. Because this gospel has been entrusted to you. And we want to encourage you to take ownership of it. Right? Ownership of it. This is, this is a gospel given to me. Entrusted to me. And it's going to have my voice to it. And it's going to be said the way that you know I communicate. And it's going to sound different. Okay. Cool. So uh, I'm, I'm going to write this out real big. I know it's really small for you guys. But just starting it out, starting out, the three questions are, let's write really big. Pray. How can I pray for you? Why is this a, an easy way to start a conversation? Why, why is this an easy way to explore a conversation that might lead to the gospel? Yeah. 
It's not confrontational. You're showing that you care. Right? It's, you're showing like love for that person. Like, when you're praying for somebody, when you're offering to pray for someone, and not just offering to pray, but if they have something you can pray for, if you say, hey, can I just pray for you right now? And you take their needs, their sickness, their troubles, their, their problems, their issues, and you bring it up to God. And to His heart, and to His will, and you, and you watch God plant that back into their lives as you're praying with them. I have never had, I've done this hundreds of times, I've never had anyone give me any pushback from the next question. Are you near or far? Or close or far? Are you near or are you far from God? I'm, every single time someone was open to be prayed for, they will tell me, and I get all kinds of answers. Some people say, I'm, I'm pretty near, I'm near to God, I'm far from God, or it depends on the day, <laughs> somewhere in between, I'm not really sure. Sometimes they'll get into their own faith story or their own journey or their own struggle. Sometimes they'll just give a one-word answer. Everyone responds because you just went before God with them in prayer, right? And, and it's amazing how open people are about this is really where I am, right? And then, like Caleb said, regardless of the answer, we always just ask, can, show and tell. Can I show? Can I show you a picture of what it looks like to be near to God? Let's really help me. Okay? And then you walk through the gospel, and again, conversational guide. God's design, sin and brokenness, Jesus, response to the gospel. Turn and believe. Jesus is Lord, new identity, new life, Holy Spirit, growing and going. Make sense? Yep. Okay. You sure no one got stuck? Good job, guys. That's pretty awesome. All right. One of the, one of the things that we've seen in the harvest that sometimes surprises is when we say, can we pray for you? Their response instantly is, no one has ever asked me that before. We've had that. You'll have that. And one time, Dave and I were in a trip, in a, a mobile home park, and the girl came to the door, and I asked that question. And the very first thing she did was just immediately start crying. Just like that. You know, so you don't know what they're going to say, but there are people that are really, really, really happy that you care enough that you would pray for them. Yeah. So, um, so, so important, I think, what, what you just heard is, is key. Remember that we don't have to manufacture Jesus' ministry. Right. He's already working. We join where he's already at work at. Right. So that should take a lot of load off to recognize that if we have these tools, if we understand what to say, we're joining in the work of Jesus already. We don't have to make room or space. So like we just said, when you said, can I pray for you? God's already been working on that person's heart. We are now the next conduit of God's grace and ministry and helping lead that person to the next place. Right? So we're joining Jesus who's already at work. It's important to remember that as we go. Amen. And that... We start with ministering to people. Oh, did you have a question? Or see this one? Okay. We start with ministering to people, offering to pray, caring, showing love for that person, bringing their requests up to God, because what we're looking for are God-prepared people. The Holy Spirit going before us and preparing people, right, who are open to a conversation about the gospel. And wherever they are, right, we can invite them to the next step. So what do you do? Right? When you share this and someone says, yeah, uh, I'm a follower of Jesus. Yeah, I'm saved. What I ask, well, how are you doing in, in growing with him and, and going? Are there people in your life who are far from God? Uh, sometimes people are like, well, hmm. <laughs> you know? What's stopping you? What's keeping you, right, from going 
And then you can invite them on the spot to equip them with what you've just been equipped in. Can I, can I take, some, take, some, take some time with you and then just, just train you, equip you so that you're ready to, to go and to have a, a gospel conversation uh, with people in your life who are far from God? So no matter where you are on this, whether it's you can invite someone to follow Jesus or invite a believer to be equipped with the gospel to take Jesus to people who are far from him, this is a great just conversation guide. Make sense? Okay. We got time. So what I'd like for us to do is do, remember, these are reps, right? Let's do another rep. So I'm going to walk through it, and I'm going to try to walk through the, uh, the three circles in 90 seconds. And I'm doing it, in a, and I, same thing, but I sound different. We all sound different, right? So I'm going to walk through it again in 90 seconds. 90 seconds. Huh? Yeah, go for it. Practical question. Yes. Um, the piece of paper or whatever you draw the circles on. Yeah. What what uh, kind of experiences have you had with that? What do you find? Like using paper or whatever. Yeah. When I when I am intentional going out, I usually have like a note card somewhere. I have some something in my wallet, or I carry a note card around. I got a pen around, and when I don't. Is my phone here? Where's my phone? I have a sticker on the back of my phone. The three circles. In fact, I have one for all of you. Okay? All right? So when I don't have anything to draw out, I'm just like, can I just show you a picture? I don't have anything to write with, but here, this kind of explains it out. And it's just the three circles. I just walk through the gospel with them. <laughs> so I've had plenty of gospel conversations with the back of my phone. Okay? Yeah. Also, just real quick, this is kind of cool. This is out there. Perfect. Um, I'm a real big nerd. Like, I will admit it a million <laughs> times over. So I found on Amazon a portable dry erase notebook, okay? Literally, there's a dry erase board right here. And I always have my backpack wherever I go. I got a dry erase marker because one of these things, <laughs> I see, I told you I'm a nerd, guys. One of these things might be prompted by the Holy Spirit to say, hey, show this. Yeah. And I always want to be prepared, right? This is like 30 bucks on Amazon, or like maybe even cheaper now. But there's so many things, some stickers to whatever. But yeah, the drawing works yeah. a lot, just yeah. to be clear. <laughs> there, there's been plenty of times when I walked through the gospel and I didn't have any picture to show. But again, this is the, these are the pieces of it, right? These are just the core pieces of the gospel. So you practice this enough and you're able to walk through the gospel even without a picture. The point is, is this is really helpful to get practice and it's also less confrontational when you can show them a picture instead of like looking around them right in the eye. It's like, let me tell you, uh, <laughs> God had a design and we're in brokenness. And, we, you know, it's a, that's a little intimidating, right? It's like, can I just show you a picture and get what you think about it? You know, where are you? Where do you want to be? You know, and it's also really helpful, too, because people take rabbit trails and sometimes people who share the gospel go on rabbit trails, right? Having it r drawn out allows you to, like, pick some, you know, because, like, you're getting the spiritual stuff. So, like, people are going to tell you about, like, the terrible experience their grandma had in church or, or something like that. And it's like, okay, cool. All right, bring it back to here, <laughs> you know? It's good. Did you have something to say, John? I was just going to say, when we draw it on a piece of paper, we always leave the paper with them. Yeah. Cool. All right.